Hi, my name is Alicia and welcome to Mess to Masterpiece. Today's topic is 2 Corinthians and we are going to be studying this book of the Bible. Um, the belief that the author of this book was Paul and he is writing specifically to the church or believers. But if you weren't a believer, I still challenge you to listen in because there's so much that we can glean from this this book of the Bible. So I'm going to be starting in chapter one tonight with us. And let's start there. It says, this letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. And from our brother, Timothy, I'm writing to God's church in Corinth and to all his holy people throughout Greece. May God, our father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others when they are troubled. We will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. We are confident that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. So to stop right there for just a second, um, we can see in that verse 3 and 4 that Jesus is the source of all comfort by sharing in his suffering. So when we suffer, we take part in experiencing just a glimpse of what Jesus went through. But when we go through the different hard circumstances, whether it's cancer or um, diagnosis of some sort, a loss of a loved one, um, the COVID-19, just the day in and day out, um, the problems that that has created. When we go through those things, God can give us comfort. And he really does. I can attest to that time and time again, how God has just brought comfort into my life, even in the most um, the most difficult circumstances, God has still just shown his presence. And he not only gives us that comfort, but he He gives us comfort in knowing that we can comfort other people. And so there's such power in knowing that we are not alone. And there's such there's just such a beautiful connection that can happen when maybe you've experienced something and then you can share your experience with somebody else that may be going through that exact circumstance or maybe even something similar. Or even if you haven't gone through something, just knowing that you're not alone, that people care and that are praying for you and lifting you up and are there to wipe your tears and also to make you laugh and everything in between. Um, that we can just take heart and knowing that we have that source of comfort in Jesus and his people. That's it's it really is incredible. So picking up in chapter one, verses eight, it says, we think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. And we thought we never would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die, but as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely on God. And he did rescue us from a mortal danger, and he will rescue us again. We have placed our confidence in him, and he will continue to rescue us. And you are helping by praying for us. Then many people will give thanks because God has graciously answered so many prayers for our safety. Have you ever had that feeling of just being completely crushed or overwhelmed by the circumstances in your life or maybe in those that you love? Um, I can definitely relate um, not only on a personal level um, with my health issues and the, my battles um, with strokes and things especially in particular these, this past year, um, but also just the overwhelming burden that I have for all of those loved ones and the people that I know that are struggling right now, whether it's with COVID or losing loved ones or just having a really hard time. Um, and there's a lot of times that 
we we feel like we can't do it another day. I know there's been so time, many times where by the do- even by the doctors that I was not expected to live. Um, I was expected to die. They declared that over me that I you know was dead in a sense. But through this journey, through this awakening, I um, have realized in my weakness when I've had eight EpiPens in a week and am just beyond my my wits end with just fighting um, continuing reactions or um, when I lay in bed in the morning and try to figure out how I'm going to get through the day another day with only two working limbs and to get through my TPN. And I know for me recently, um, I'm I have incontinence, and so I'm not able to contain when I go to the bathroom or not. And so after changing myself so many times, I'm just, some days I'm just like, I can't do this, Scott. I I can't. I just can't take it anymore. But in that weakness, in our frailty, that is strength. Because when we let go and let God do what he was created to do learn to depend upon him for everything um they always i've heard the saying that when god is all that you have he's all you need and time and time again in my life i have seen that um but when we get to the end of ourselves that's when god takes over and he fills in the gap when we trust the outcome to him Okay, so sp- continuing back in verse 12, it says, We can stay with confidence and ha- a clear conscience that we have lived with a God-given holiness and sincerity in all our dealings. We have depended on God's grace, not on our own human wisdom. That is is how we have conducted ourselves before the world and especially towards you. Our letters have been straightforward and there is nothing written between the lines and nothing you can't understand i hope someday you will fully understand us even if you don't now under, understand this then on the day when lord jesus returns you will be proud of us in the same way we are proud of you since i was so sure of your understanding and trust i wanted to give you a devil blessing by visiting you twice First on my way to Macedonia, and again when I return from Macedonia. Then you could send me on my way to Judea. You may be asking why I changed my plan. Do you think I make my plans carelessly? Do you think I am like people of the world who say yes when they really mean no? As surely as God is faithful, our word to you does not waver between yes and no. For Jesus Christ, the Son of God, does not waver between yes and no. He is the one whom Silas, Timothy, and I preached to you. And as God's ultimate yes, he always does what he says. For all God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. And through Christ our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. It is God who enables us along with you to stand firm in Christ. He has commissioned us and he has identified us by, by as his own, by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the first installment that guarantees everything he has promised us. Now I call upon my God as my witness that I am telling the truth, and the reason I didn't return to Corinth was to spare you from a severe rebuke. But that does not mean you want to do- we want to dominate you by telling you how to practice, to put your faith into... by t- by telling you how to put your faith into practice. We want to work together with you so you will be the full of joy, for it is by your own faith that you stand firm. So when we get to this part of the scripture, it's talking about our yeses and nos. But I really want to focus here on the ends. Um, this on, In verse 22, it says, And he has identified us as his own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts, as the first installment that guarantees everything he has promised us. God has put his Holy Spirit in our hearts and we are his. We belong to him completely and fully. And by putting that installment in us, that means he's not finished yet and that he will come through 
by fulfilling his promises because he is faithful. He is good. And we can we can say that with confidence. It's not a a question as to what if he will or not. We we can stand in that that certainty, which I I don't know about you, but that brings me great great hope. So so as we studied this chapter one tonight, I hope that you were able to gather um, just a even just a piece of the Lord's word for you tonight, and re- being reminded that that Jesus is the source of all comfort, um, and that He gives us comfort that we may also comfort other people, and even when we feel broken and crushed and overwhelmed with the circumstances in our lives or maybe even in those around us we we can take hope because god is with us and at the that in the in our weakness he is strong and so we shouldn't be afraid to show off our weaknesses um because that allows the power and the glory of god to be magnified and it's when we stop relying our, on ourselves and what we think we can do or we 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 focus all of our activities on our perspective of ourselves we're limiting god and so when we have that full dependence upon god um it's it's truly amazing the relationship the intimacy that you can have with him and how much that will change your life and speaking of that relationship, we can be confident in knowing he will fulfill his promises. It's not a maybe, it's a yes. And we, because we are his, and it might not be in the way that we think, but we can we can have and cling to that that knowledge and knowing that he will come through. So as we close this video tonight, I want to pray for you. Lord, we thank you so much for this day, Lord, for, for this gift of life, Lord. Lord, we thank you for who you are, Lord, for your faithfulness, Lord, time and time again, and Lord, for your comfort. Lord, right now, I pray that you would wrap your arms around those that are hurting, Lord. Hold them close to your heart and let them know that they are loved and that they are seen and that they are not alone, Lord. Lord, we thank you for for sending your son to us. And so we may be reminded that you understand, Lord. You understand grief. You understand anger, Lord. You understand all the emotions that we experience and all the things that we go through on a day-to-day basis. And you are walking with us each step of the way. Lord, even when we feel crushed and broken and, and alone and think that there's no way we can go on, you are there And Lord, I pray that you would help each and every one of us, Lord, to take the things in our life that we are holding tight to, that we we can't seem to let go of. Um, For whatever reason, Lord, I pray that we would open our hands and surrender it to you, Lord. And knowing that we don't have to hide our weakness, we don't have to be afraid, Lord, because in our weakness, you are strong. And I pray that you would help us to learn that greater dependence and trust on you for everything, Lord. Anything and everything, Lord, we can depend on you. You never fail, Lord. And I thank you time and time again for continuing to remind us of that, Lord. You are, we are chosen. We are loved. We belong to you, Lord. And you are going to come back for us. And for those, Lord, that maybe don't know you, Lord, or that have strayed away, Lord, I pray tonight, Lord, today may be the day that they come running to you, Lord. You're waiting with open arms, Lord. Help them to see that they are loved and that you are meeting them where they are. Whatever circumstance they may find in life, you are you are there, Lord. And I just pray for each and every one of us, Lord, and all the things that we face on a day-to-day basis, Lord. I pray that in everything we may glorify you. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.